Welcome to Shooting Stars of California. In this video, we take a detailed look at the growth, reproduction, and morphological features of shooting stars, one of California's showiest wildflowers. California has eight species of shooting stars found in most areas of the state. To see a video about the two most commonly encountered species in lowlands of the California Floristic Province, click on the link at the end of this video. Shooting stars are in the family Primulaceae, and they all have a similar life cycle. Lowland species begin to grow in winter, while high elevation species have to contend with low temperatures and snow, so they begin to grow in late spring and summer. To show each developmental stage in the life of shooting stars, we'll use Primula clevelandii, Cleveland's shooting star. With winter rains, basal leaves sprout and often lie flat on the ground. As more rains come, individual plants send up a single peduncle that produces one or more buds. At first, the young buds face upward. As each flower's pedicel elongates, it curves and makes the bud face down. As the flower opens, its petals fold backward. After buzz pollination by bumblebees in the very early morning, seeds start to develop, the ovary swells, and the pedicel restraightens, making the flower face upward again. Soon, the petals fall off, but the sepals remain. The fruit is circumcisal. When dry, the tip pops off and the seeds spill out when the stalk blows in the wind. Their amber to brown seeds are small, irregularly shaped, and do not have a wing or membrane around their edge. By summer, the entire plant is died off above ground and entered dormancy below ground, which continues until next winter. Shooting stars have unusual flowers. An understanding of their complicated anatomy is needed for identification. Each flower has four or five calyx lobes and corolla lobes, and four or five stamens. When open, one can see the four or five colorful stamens and a long central style. With some of the calyx, corolla, and stamens removed, you can find all the flower parts, such as its simple pistil with a superior ovary. The corolla base is usually yellow, there is often a white band above the yellow. Most flowers have a purple to reddish band or ring within or below the yellow, near the point of reflection where the corolla bends backward. The distal portion of the petal blade is either white, lavender, pink, or purple. The anthers open and release pollen toward the style. The stigma is either clearly enlarged or not. The four or five stamens are especially unique. In most species, the filament bases are fused into a tube around the ovary. The tube's color is variable or constant within a species. The anther connective, the tissue between the two lobes of the anther, is very important for identification. The outer surface of the filaments, referred to as the filament tube region, often has a continuation of the anther connective tissue. Note the texture and color of both structures. In this photograph, the connectives are yellow, and the filament tube region is purple. Anther connectives are either smooth, two species, or wrinkled, six species. The wrinkles are either transverse, perpendicular to the style, five species, or randomly wrinkled in no clear direction, one species. In pressed specimens, anther connectives may appear to be longitudinally wrinkled parallel to the style, but no species in California has longitudinally wrinkled connectives when fresh. When identifying shooting stars, the primula key asks several questions. Some shooting stars are easy to identify, while others are more difficult with similar characteristics and overlapping ranges. Are the corolla lobes spreading outward or erect, upward, with clearly free anthers? If so, that would be primula suffrutescens, a montane species that is not a shooting star. Or are they reflexed, curved backwards, with anthers held into a cone shape? That makes it a true shooting star. How many corolla lobes does it have? Most species have five lobes, rarely four or six, while some have four, rarely five. How wide is the stigma? Is it enlarged and much wider than the style, three species, or about the same width, five species? Are the filament bases free or fused into a tube? If fused, how long and wide is that tube? Measure multiple flowers to get a feel for the character. Are the anther connective smooth, two species, or wrinkled, six species? What color are the filament tube regions and anther connectives? Are they single colored, 
or multicolored. When the mature fruit opens, is it circumcisal? A little cap pops off the top. Is it denticulate? The tips split and fold back, leaving little teeth. Or is it valvate? It splits open from tip to base. In the wild, last season's fruits often remain. Inspect those to learn how they opened. Is any part of the plant hairy or glabrous, hairless? Is it glandular with glands on the surface? Or glandular hairy with glands at the tips of little hairs? What is the length and general shape of the mature leaves? Do they narrow gradually into a winged petiole? Or do they narrow more or less abruptly into a slender petiole without winged margins? It's helpful to examine multiple mature plants. The leaves of young non-flowering plants often do not show mature leaf characters. Since most species have a limited distribution range, knowing what species occur in your area can help with identification. The northwest coast of the Cascades has five species. The Sierra Nevada has seven. The Great Basin and Desert Mountains have five. The Central Coast Ranges, South Coast Ranges, and Great Central Valley have two. The South Coast Inland to the Low Elevation Peninsular and Transverse Ranges has one. The higher elevations of the Transverse Ranges and San Jacinto Range have two. Nearly everywhere you go in California, you can enjoy shooting stars.